Hi, in this video, we'll try to understand how we can use Raspberry Pi Pico and Pico W for embedded systems application. Now, if you are aware of embedded system applications or if you know about how embedded systems works, then you can skip this session. But I would still say, please continue, go on and keep listening. Try to understand every detail as much as possible. Now, what exactly is an embedded system and what are the IoT systems? How exactly do we build them and how Raspberry Pi Pico can help? We are trying to find all those answers into this video. I'll try to make it as short as possible, yet I will try to not remove or not include any technical details which are important. Let's start. Now, when you want to create an embedded system or an IoT system, Essentially, the components that we use in an embedded or IoT systems are related or completely revolving around a microcontroller. I'll give you an example now. I'll just open my notepad and we'll just try to have a blank space first. So let's start with an example. If you want, for example, to create a very simple temperature controller, okay? Now, what is the job of temperature controller? The job of temperature controller is basically to continuously display the temperature that is being coming from some sensor and you need to display it onto some kind of LED display. Then what it has to do further is it has to turn on or off a device if the temperature falls above or below a set point. Now, how do you turn on and off a device? You basically try to make something go on or off. It can be a heater. So let's say if the temperature falls below a particular level, you may want to turn on a heater or you may want to turn on a cooler as well if the temperature goes above a particular set point. Then what it consists of is it also will consist of some switches using which a user can enter the set point. Now this is a very simple embedded system example that I have taken but you can correlate this example with many other things. Now this is an example where I am assuming that one is not having any idea about an embedded system. Now let's try to break down whatever is present into this system in terms of technical interfaces. Let's say there are some LEDs as well for indication. Now if I have to technically break it down, try to understand what all it consists of. Okay. So first thing is, so first thing is we have a temperature sensor. It means we need some kind of sensor interfacing. Then we have an LED display, means we need some kind of display interfacing. Then we have a turn on off a device. Turning on off a device means very simple. Basically what you need is you need to have an input output line or output line. Similarly, there are switches means you need input line and then there is an LED for indication it means output line. So usually when such system has to be designed the way it's designed is there is a microcontroller at the heart of the system. To this microcontroller you will connect switches as input Then you will connect sensor as input. These two will become the inputs for your system. Then using some IO lines, you will connect an LED for indication that becomes your output. Again, using some IO lines, what you will do is you will connect a display to display this information of temperature onto the display. 
and then again by making use of some IO lines we will turn on or turn off a particular external device and how all of this works is essentially written inside this microcontroller in the form of a program. So your system is always reconfigurable through your program. You may want to keep that your LED should turn on or blink once when the system is powered on. You may also want to say, okay, the LED will blink 10 times when the system is powered on, just to give an indication. All of those things will be controlled here through something called as the program which resides into the memory of microcontroller. Now this is a very simple and the most crude form of embedded system that I can tell you because of the example. Now if the example was something else then there will be more such interfaces. Now this is the classic temperature controller example that can be used. Now how the same system converts into an IoT system? Let's try to understand that. So if you have an additional network interface over here, using some means, if your microcontroller can connect to internet, then what happens is the microcontroller can send the same information onto a server. And then user can log into that server onto any mobile or computer device, open that particular URL and see the charts and trends of how your particular temperature is rising. Something like that. You can also give a feature from IoT or from this online server that you press a button over here, the server sends back a command to network, then to microcontroller and then you turn on and off a device. Now this is in a very nutshell format, okay, it's not a final version or it's not the only thing but this is all that is required to understand the embedded systems development and IoT as a beginner to start with. Now how Pico helps in doing all those things is Pico has IO interfaces like digital inputs and outputs. It has got a PWM signal which we'll try to explain or which we'll try to understand in coming time. It also has got communication interfaces like UART, I2C, SPI. It has got ADC as well as temperature sensors onto it. And to top it all, if you are using P code W, then you also have a network interface circuit. So you can also connect to a wireless network like Wi-Fi and send your information over to internet. And that's where this particular pin diagram is important. You will have to study this pin diagram closely. If you see GP0, GP1, up to up to blah blah blah, all those pins, these are all your general purpose input output pins. You can use any pin as input or output. And each pin is also reconfigurable so that it can be used for SPI protocol, I2C protocol, or UART. Don't worry, what is SPI, what is I2C, what is UART? We'll study that as we get to that stage. This particular microcontroller board is also or, or can also be powered directly using an external supply. So while experimenting, we are going to connect the USB cable all the time, but it's not the case. When you want to install a system based on Pico, you may want to power it on using an external power supply where you can connect that power supply or 5 volt power supply to this board and it will generate the required voltages for all other pins. Remember there is one very important aspect that needs to be taken care of that the pins of Raspberry Pi Pico are strictly 3.3 volt compliant only. What it means is if I am taking output of a particular pin or taking out from a particular pin then my logic 1 will always generate only 3.3 volt signal and my logic 0 will always generate only 0 volt signal. You have to consider the same when you are giving input to a particular pin. Your input should not be more than 3.3 volt and when it is 3.3 volt it will be treated as logic 1. 
and when you give input as zero volt it will always be treated as logic zero you also have to make sure or you might have understood so far that if it only generates 3.3 .3 and 0 volt on output pin then it cannot turn on anything else rather than a simple led from its pin so when you want to connect a device to be turned on and off or any such thing then we will use appropriate switching circuits same goes when you are applying input if you are giving any input voltage which is greater than 3.3 volt like 12 volt 24 volt or sometimes even ac supply then you need to step it down you need to convert it you need to octocouple it do whatever you can but make sure that the input that is going to controller is not exceeding 3.3 volt and it's not going below zero volt. these are some considerations that you have to take when you are experimenting with raspberry pi pico board there are also external voltage pins like 3v3 out you can see with which you can power on any external sensor but remember the current capacity of this supply is less so don't go on and connect very heavy load onto it you can use it simply for connecting simple peripherals like sensors or io interfaces so this is the fundamental of raspberry pi pico's gpios and how it can be used for creating embedded applications these documents will be extremely helpful the raspberry pi pico data sheet and the raspberry pi pico python sdk we will be using both these documents throughout the course i will be showing the notes with my presentation like this but it doesn't mean that you should completely uh, bypass or you should completely ignore these two docs we are going to use these two docs extensively i hope this gives you a very simple idea of embedded systems design using pico Let's start understanding all these different interfaces which are present on Raspberry Pi Pico. Let's experiment with them and start creating some systems around it. Thank you for watching this video.